This video is chapter 15, part 2, so example problems for section 2. Here is example 1. An object oscillates with simple harmonic motion along the x-axis. Its position varies with time according to the equation xt equals 4 cosine pi t plus pi over 4. Part A is to determine the amplitude, frequency, and period of the motion. Part B is to calculate the velocity and acceleration of the object at any time t. And then using the results of part B, determine the position, velocity, and acceleration of the object at t equals 1 second. Part D, determine the maximum speed and maximum acceleration of the object. And then part E, find the displacement of the object between 0 and 1 second. So part A is pretty simple. If we look at our general equation for simple harmonic motion, we see that it's a cosine omega t plus phi. So a is this, and in our equation that we're given in the problem, it corresponds to 4. So a equals 4 meters. Now omega is equal to pi, so you can see that right here, pi, and that's omega. And we know from our table of information and from the first PowerPoint for this chapter that t is equal to 2 pi over omega. So we just have to plug in omega equals pi. So we get that the period is equal to 2 seconds. And then the frequency is just the inverse of the period. So 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 hertz. So part A was pretty easy. So we've got amplitude, period, and frequency. Then part B is to calculate the velocity and acceleration of the object at any time t. So we just want to take the, der the first derivative of this to get the velocity. And you do the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside times the derivative of the outside. The derivative of the inside is just pi. And then the derivative of the outside would be negative 4 sine. So we end up with negative 4 pi sine of pi t plus pi over 4. And then to get the acceleration, we just want to take the second derivative of this, which would be the first derivative of our velocity. Again, we want to use the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside times the derivative of the outside. So we end up with negative 4 pi squared times the cosine of pi t plus pi over 4. So those underlying ones are our two answers to part b. I'm going to do part C through E on the next so in the next slide. So we want to find the position, velocity, and acceleration at t equals 1. So I'm just going to plug in 1 to each of my functions. So for the position, it's negative 2.83 meters. And for the velocity, if you just plug in 1 for the time, it's 8.89 meters per second. And for the acceleration, it's 27.92 meters per second squared. So these three numbers are our answers to part C. Part D asks us to find the maximum speed and velocity. So that's actually pretty easy or sorry, the maximum speed and acceleration. So th remember this number was our maximum position. So that means that this number here will be our maximum speed. So V max is equal to negative four pi. And that should be meters per second. Oh, so I put in a decimal, 12.57 meters per second. And then same goes for the acceleration. It should just be that number there. 
So a max is equal to negative 4 pi squared. And we just want, oh, the reason I took away the negative here is because it asks for speed. So we can assume it went to the absolute value. So our maximum acceleration is 39.5 meters per second squared. And then part E, let me just remind myself what part E is. Um, we want to find the displacement of the object between 0 and 1 second. So that's pretty easy. We already found what the position is at 1 second, so we just need to find what it is at 0 seconds. So if we plug 0 into our position function, we get that it's 2.83. And then the displacement is going to be the final position minus the initial position. So that would be negative 2.83 minus 2.83. And that ends up being 5.66. And that should be meters. So those are the answers to that problem. Let's do another example. And this is problem two from your textbook. In an engine, a piston oscillates with simple harmonic motion so that its position varies according to the expression x equals 5 cosine 2t plus pi over 6, or x is in centimeters and t is in seconds. So keep in mind that it'll be in centimeters for our answers here. At t equals 0, we want to find the position of the piston, its velocity, its acceleration, and we want to find the period and the amplitude of the motion. So part A is quite easy. We just plug in t equals 0 into our position function. And we end up with 4.33 centimeters. For part B, we just want to take the derivative of our position function and plug in t equals 0. So our derivative is going to be negative 10 sine 2t plus pi over 6. And then we just plug in t equals 0. And that would be negative 5 centimeters per second. And then part C asks for the acceleration. For that, we just want to take the derivative of our velocity function. And we end up with negative 20 cosine 2t plus pi over 6. And if we plug in t equals 0, we get that the acceleration is negative 17.32 centimeters per second squared. And then part d, find the period and the amplitude of the motion. Well, we know that this number right here, this 2, is what our omega is. But something that's even easier is that we know that this number right here is just our amplitude. So our amplitude is equal to 5 centimeters. So again, we know that our omega is 2. So we just plug in 2 in our equation for period t equals 2 pi over omega. So t equals 3.14 seconds. So hopefully you found these problems relatively easy because um, they'll get a bit harder, but hopefully you have the basics down.